guys. So today I want to make a delicious and very easy treat of coconut macaroon that looks like an egg's nest and inside are going to be some little eggs. It's so pretty, so cute, and so simple. So a traditional macaroon like we think of is that smooth domed, almost like a little pastry cookie and it's got that crispy shell. It's perfectly domed and round and then it's filled with a delicious filling. That is a French macaroon. This is a coconut macaroon, and coconut macaroons are actually Italian, Italiano. So, going back to my roots, even though my DNA said I was mostly Irish, I'm still holding on to my Italian, okay? <laughs> I'm not letting go. So, I'm gonna show you how to make them. They're super simple. They look simple. Now, I've never made them before, so I'm excited to do it, and I know it's gonna be a lot less difficult than it looks, right? It looks all fancy, intimidating, Oh my goodness, how's somebody gonna do that? It's not hard, guys. Okay, so the recipe calls for four egg whites, so just separate your whites out, four of them. And it's a half a teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of sugar, one 14 ounce package of sweetened coconut. Make sure you get sweetened coconut, guys. About a cup, half a cup to a cup, depending upon how much you might need. They're gonna melt down white chocolate, so make sure you get the little white chocolate morsels. You can also do the candy melts. I do white chocolate, this was Ghirardelli, and it's gonna go in the center when they're all cooled and done. And then you wanna get some assortment of different eggs, right? This time of year is so easy to find eggs. These are the little malted milk ball eggs, and then underneath down in here, I have some like jelly beans that I can add to that are like sparkly, just Brock's jelly beans I got at Walmart, so. Simple and easy and cheap and it's gonna look amazing, and all of your guests or family will be wild at these gorgeous bird nest cookie treats. Even though technically it's not a cookie, but you know what I'm saying. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take your egg whites and just put that in a bowl. Second thing you're gonna do is add your salt, Add your sugar, tiny, tiny bit of sugar. And then you're going to mix this up with a spoon real quick. And then you're gonna add your coconut. You're gonna fork, it says to fork in. What the fork are you talking about? You're gonna fork in your 14 ounce package of sweetened coconut, okay. Also wanna give a shout out real quick to my aunt. She gave me these gorgeous gold filigree earrings. They're stunning. Thank you, Auntie. I love you. Mwah. Okay, so now that that's stirred really well, you're going to take your package, open up your package, pour that in there, and you're going to fork it together. Okay, so while I'm forking this, fork this. While I'm doing that, and so you'll see kind of chunks because it is sweetened, so break up those chunks of coconut, okay? I want to talk about something else, which is the hug test. You think you might have forgiven somebody in your life and you think you might have moved forward. Can you hug them? If they were standing right now in your kitchen, could you hug them? If you can, you've moved forward, you've forgiven. If you haven't, you won't be able to hug them. If they were standing in front of you right now and you couldn't hug them, then you have not let go of what they've done to you. Does it mean you have to have them back in your life? Nope. Does it mean that you have to have them over for a barbecue? Nope. Do you have to call them? Nope. Do you have to write them a letter? Nope. Do you have to visit them in prison? Nope. You ain't got to do nothing except forgive them. I want to tell you something that I've said before and that a very, very wise woman once told me. Forgiveness is not an emotion. Forgiveness is a choice. That's hard to hear, right? Because we're like, it's not a choice and I can't help the way I feel and I have been wronged and I've been devastated and you have no idea what I've been through and you're right. I have no idea what you've been through. I don't know what you're going through now and I don't know what you've gone through in the past. But I do know this, it's killing you. It's manifesting in your body somewhere. Either you're physically ill already or you're gonna be ill. Now, when they say fork this, you're just gonna kinda 
kind of fork it in there together, right? Without stirring, you're just gonna kind of smoosh it in there. It's killing you. It's hurting your marriage, it's hurting your relationships. It's hurting the relationship with yourself because your soul's in there and your soul wants out of this bondage. And it's affecting your relationship with your children. You don't think it is, but when your soul is not at rest, and if there's unforgiveness, then that means your soul is not at rest. Then that affects everything in your life. It affects your sleeping patterns, your eating habits, whether you're eating too much, too little, right? It affects your heart rate, your body, your circulatory system, your nervous system, your brain chemistry, every single thing and every cell and fiber that you have inside of you and that you come in contact with is affected by your unforgiveness. You don't understand. It was horrific. Mm -hmm. It wasn't fair. You're right. I didn't deserve it. You didn't. I don't want to go through this anymore, but I don't know how to let it go. It's really simple. Number one, it's a choice. Number two, all you have to say is, Jesus, I forgive blank blank. Or I forgive them. Or I forgive her, him. Guess what? God already knows who wronged you. God knows who you're talking about. You don't have to go and figure out the correct spelling and write it all down for him. He knows. And he's sorry for what's happened to you too. Did you know that? Did you know his heart breaks because you've been through pain? And you know what else is going on with his heart? It's upset too because you're carrying this and you don't have to carry it anymore. And you're making yourself in bondage and he wants his babies to be free, right? We're his babies. We're his little girl and his little boy. And he doesn't want us to go through that anymore. We don't have to hold it on and we don't have to carry it. You can do it right now. Do it right now with me. Just leap of faith. You say you love him. You say you believe him. You trust in him. Maybe you don't know him at all. Leap of faith. Jesus, I forgive blank blank. Maybe you'll be on the floor for an hour like I was after I said that. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll just go about your day. Your life will change. They're not hurting because you're not forgiving them. They're not in distress or pain or discomfort. They're not in, in the threat of losing their home or having their car repoed because you haven't forgiven them. They are not being punished because you are holding on to it. You're being punished because you're holding on to it. I knew that I could not have a womb with a baby in it until I got rid of that bitterness. Maybe that's what you're holding on to. You're holding on to some kind of resentment and you can't get pregnant. Now you can't go into it saying, well, I'm just gonna forgive this person so I can get knocked up. It doesn't work like that. You have to want to do it. It's a decision. You make the decision, you just do it. And then the blessings will flow into your life. Blessings are still going to flow. He still loves you and he's going to take care of you. But I'm going to tell you, your life is going to absolutely change when you finally say, Lord, I forget blank, blank. And maybe it's a laundry list. Maybe you got him and his mama and all these people. And you're just like, I got to forgive them all. Forgive them all. Say, Lord, I forgive them. I release them to you. I can no longer do this in your name, Jesus. It is that simple. But you don't understand. It is that simple to say, I can't do this anymore, Lord, I can't carry it. Jesus, take the wheel. Please, Jesus, take the wheel. I've had to do that recently with a situation that we're going through through no fault of our own. You gotta take the wheel, Jesus. I can't control this and I can't make this better and I can't do anything about it. So take the burden from me and the worry and the guilt and the, or whatever you're going through. Even though I don't personally have guilt over the situation, Maybe you do. Maybe you think it's your fault. Let that go. Forgive yourself. Maybe you did something in your past. You cannot forgive yourself. Maybe you had an abortion and you can't forgive yourself. And I'm going to do a whole segment on that one day. That's a whole nother nest recipe. And maybe you can't forgive yourself. You know what? You get scared. We get scared. We do things when we get scared. He still loves you. He's still there for you. He's already forgiven you. And he says in the Bible that he removes it as far as the east is from the west. It's gone. It's no more. He doesn't hold it against you. When you have that forgiveness in your heart, 
he doesn't say, well, I'm still going to keep it written down because you know later when I need to check you, when I need to hip check you into the wall, I'm going to take this out and show you what you did. No, it's gone. You got to let yourself be free too. It's okay. You did something in your past. Maybe you robbed somebody or you stole something or you, whatever. And you're like, I can't, I just, I can't get over this. You can get over this. And that's the enemy telling that you can't get over it. And that's him trying to keep you there because if he didn't keep you in bondage, he can control what's going on. He's not in control. Jesus is in control and your mind's in control. Your free will, your free thoughts in control. And the control is, I don't have to carry this anymore. I'm sorry for what I did. It's in the past. It's done. And then you can walk out of it. You can step out of whatever that is you did. Who cares what you did? That's not who you are. That's how you, who you used to be. That's not who you are. Maybe you're doing something really terrible right now. It's not who you are. Stop the behavior. Stop whatever it is, right? And the past is the past. You cannot live your life looking through the rearview mirror. You will crash your ass into something else in front of you. So you gotta just, you gotta know that it's not impossible and it is a decision. It is not an emotion, it's a decision. You have the power, you really do. Jesus gave us this power to say, I'm not doing this anymore, I'm not carrying it. Okay, so that was my little um, sermon, my uh, sermon interlude in the middle of all this lovely Easter time stuff we're doing. And it's okay, and you can you can let it go. And if you start crying or something, or you feel that tugging on you, that's him. That's him saying it's time to let go. Can you hug him? Can you hug yourself? You say maybe I'm not worthy of a hug. You gotta forgive yourself. They're not worthy of a hug. You gotta forgive them. It's the only way you'll be free. I know I did it. Remember I told y'all I was never gonna ask you to do something I didn't already do. Okay. Are we the best of buds now? Nope. Is he my confidant, my everything? No. But I don't carry that anymore. That resentment and that pit and that, oh, I want you to burn it, hell, you mother. It's gone. That's between him and the Lord. Not between me and him. Whatever. Okay. So, getting back to this, y'all. Wow, got a, little, got a little deep on a Wednesday, huh? I think it's Wednesday. Yeah. Got a little deep on a Wednesday. It says two tablespoons, fill up your little coconut thing. So we're gonna do, actually we're gonna do like one and a half because these are really tiny. These are, it's a greased pan. It's already greased up and you're just gonna push it up the sides. So you have like a little hole in the middle where your little, where your um, melted chocolate's gonna go in inside the little bird nest and then your little decorations are gonna go in there, okay? So about, probably about one and a half tablespoons is what it is. My babies are loud, I don't know where they get it from. So just press up the sides. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by press up the sides. By the way, make sure you have a preheated 300 degree oven, not 350, 300 degree oven. See how they're kind of pressed up the side? It's hard to tell. I'm going up the sides and leaving like a little well for that melted white chocolate. You know, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about John Lennon and I think about him a lot. I think he was like a modern day saint. I think that the Lord blessed us with someone who was all about love. And it's just a shame it was taken for, from us for no reason at all. Any human being, right? I mean, unless they're super evil, then maybe you'd like, oh, they deserve to go. So I'm thinking about John Lennon as I'm stuffing this coconut in his pans. And I think about his song all the time. He says, all we need is love. That's gospel and biblical. I think about it a lot. Can you imagine if we all just loved? No more hate groups, no more skinheads, no more Nazis, neo-Nazis, no more factions, offshoots, crazy groups that hate on people because of the color of their skin or their sexuality. Can you imagine, or their religion? Just think about that. If every single person on the planet exhibited love, 
all this would go away. And I guess it would be a perfect world, and it's not, because the Lord tells us it's a fallen world. See, so she took a bite of that apple, right? Stupid ass Eve. And this is what you get. And that stupid ass Adam, right? Okay. Let's eat it. My mother used to call it the power of the pea. Before you pop these in the oven, guys, what you need to do is make sure that you, you don't have to do this, but I like to, make sure the edges are cleaned up because if you don't, they'll kind of like bake on to the sides or the top of the pan. And that's where you have to like scrub it and it and your pan isn't nice anymore. It doesn't really matter. It's a baking pan. It's industrial, right? You're using it to bake. So who cares? But I don't want to have to scrub all these tiny little pieces of coconut off. So I'm just going to try to clean it up a little bit. Also, when you put these in, you're going to pop these in the oven for about 30 minutes. If they start to get brown too fast on the edges, because you don't want these to burn, you can just take a strip of aluminum foil and place that over them in the oven. Just place it over it when you see they're getting too dark, if they're getting too dark too fast and you still got like 10, 15 minutes left and you know they're probably gonna burn. You don't want them to burn, throw that strip of foil over it and bam, you won't have any problems at all with your um, coconut macaroons getting too dark because you don't want that, it's gonna ruin the whole thing. And if you see any that aren't like pushed up on the side, just push them up. It is a little bit sticky because it's got the egg whites in it, but you know what? That's part of baking. That's part of life, right? Life gets messy. So that's it, they're just ready to go in the oven, pop them in there for 30 minutes. If they start to get too dark, watch them, throw that foil on top and you'll be right as rain. Brown, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of foil on top because I've still got one or two minutes left. So just a little piece of foil over there like that. Okay guys, so you got your white chocolate. Pour in a little bit of oil. This is just a vegetable oil. And then you're gonna give that a little stir and then throw this inside of your microwave. You're gonna start increments so you don't burn it. So it's about 30 seconds at a time. Okay, I'm gonna pop that in the microwave for 30 seconds and we'll check it. Okay, so I checked it for 30 seconds. It's still not ready, so just do 30 seconds more. Be patient, you do not wanna scorch it because then it's gonna get dried out and it's gonna be useless. So about 45 seconds in total. Look at that nice and smooth. Yeah, that's exactly what you want right there. So my bestie, she knows how to bake. I do not know how to bake, but like bake, bake. So she taught me this cool trick, stick the piping bag inside of a cup, and then you can pour your icing or whatever filling or whatever you need to pipe inside of your bag. So that is an awesome, awesome trick she taught me. I'm sure everybody knows this, but I didn't. And then you just take it. And you just pour it right in there. And then we can pop, pipe our little bird's nest. Don't worry, I'm going to spatula that out because I don't leave anything behind. So they're out of the oven, guys, and they're beautiful. You just got to watch them, that's all. Put a little foil. Make sure they're perfect. Look at that. Nice and toasty. Ready to fill. So I'm no super duper tree hugger, but this was a large piece of foil that I used for the nest. Save it, put it back in your drawer, y'all. Just save it. I've got one big piece here from the other night, and then this piece is pretty pristine. So just conserve if you can. It is a good thing. Okay guys, so I've got the finished product here. Here's our nest, look how cute they are. Oh my goodness, guys, look at that. They're just the cutest little nest cups. They're golden brown. I watched them like a hawk. That's why they didn't burn. And they just look so sweet, right? Oh, can't wait to serve these. So I've got my trusty bag. All I did was get the bag that had the um, Ziploc bag feature, you know, cut off the bottom. I'm gonna snip off the bottom. Now these are weird because these are not the normal bags. These are bags that are supposed to kind of be wide at the bottom, so it's hard to get an edge, but that's okay. So I'm gonna just snip off the bottom. It's gonna be a little bit runny, so I wanna get a little bit in each of that white chocolate mixture. Just a little dab will do ya.
I've got them all filled. Now I can start taking my malted milk ball eggs and my jelly beans and just put about three in each one. Some I think I'll do two. And then bam, look at that, you guys. It's so cute. Oh my goodness, these are just adorable. Adorable. That's it, it's that simple, it's that easy, right? You think, ooh, coconut macaroons, it's gonna be so hard. It's not, and remember, if you can't hug them, it's time to forgive them. It's time, you've been carrying it long enough. I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed today's recipe. Please do not forget to subscribe and hit the like button and click the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when I pop out another video. Who knows what's next? You never know. Thank you guys for watching Better With Matter. I love you all. Okay, bye. so you can be the first to know when I have a new post and please press the like button. Thank you all so much for your love and support. Love you guys. Bye.